Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to Synchronicity Web TV. I am your host, Nadia Shaw, and this is your moment of synchronicity. Well, I'm so excited to celebrate with you today my friend, Clarissa Dolphin. Now, you've definitely seen Clarissa before at Synchronicity Web TV. Uh, I just think that she is this brilliant, bright star, and she's really doing these very cutting edge things in astrology. And the type of astrology she does is vibrational astrology. Well, Clarissa is also going to be a part of the July speaker series at Synchronicity University. And I'm so excited about this because we are going to have five incredible speakers, leaders in the field. And we have our world famous choose your tuition rate at Synchronicity University, where until the end of June, so for about a little over two weeks, I think by the time this publishes or about three weeks to go, you can actually choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class to learn from these world class speakers that I'm so excited to celebrate with you. So yes, my dear friend, Clarissa Dolphin, leader in vibrational astrology, someone who's blessed my life with her wisdom as well. Welcome, Clarissa. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Queen Nadia. I love you to death. Um, I love all your students, everybody out there. It's such an honor to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. And you taught last year as well uh, as part of the conference event that I did online, a joint event between Synchronicity University and the London School of Astrology. And that was so much fun. And I loved the energy you brought. Um, and I love this whole other understanding of astrology with vibrational astrology that you brought as well. So for those who weren't uh, attending that event, let me ask you, because vibrational astrology, that's going to be really new to a lot of people. What is Yes. Yeah. Long story short, vibrational astrology is reading astrology through feeling and experiencing and sensing the energy. So it's instead of using archetypes, which are valuable and there's no hateration at all, the experience really is of, you know, energy flowing through you. It's very future astrology. So it's very aligned, directly aligned with ideas in quantum physics and ideas in music theory. So the chart becomes a composition that you can feel and experience like you feel music, like you feel other people, their energies, et cetera. Wow, so it connects vibrationally in terms of the way that music is vibration. It's about interpreting yep. the music that shows up in the chart. That's, such, that's so poetic. It's like each person <laughs> is their own song, right? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're total, like, I don't know what song I would be, um, maybe Tupac. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I remember talking to you about this last time and saying I would be like Daddy Yankee. I would be Daddy Yankee, <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And so the different uh, aspects are different notes. Is that how you understand the chart? Absolutely. So different aspects, different other chart elements like planets and their combinations. Planets make certain harmonies um, and different harmonics, which are originally they're just aspects in a chart. Third harmonic is a trine in the natal chart, et cetera, et cetera. So basically we're assuming that the chart is an infinite subatomic um, entity that you can peer into and see all these different, you know, ethereal planes and experience them through energy. And that's how the divination talks to you. Wow. And I know that your class specifically is going to be on the South node. Now I find this really intriguing and I was really excited to have you teach on the South node because there's so much about the North node. I mean, I literally wrote a whole book. One of my books is called the universe is wise and loving. And it's basically all about the North node. Of course, when you talk about the North, you have to talk about the South as well. So there is that there, but I just loved that you were going to focus in on the South Node. So can you tell us a little bit about how you understand the South Node in astrology? Absolutely. So I performed a research project into it, looking at whatever at AA data, um, which is verified data for like uh, hundreds of thousands of charts. And what I found is that the Lunar South Node is actually a social point that sucks people in. 
and the lunar north node is sh the person shooting out and influencing the world. The thing about the lunar nodes, both of them, is that they they don't have hindrances. Like you can't block the energy of the nodes. Try all you might. Like it's like basically sitting on a geyser. It's like you can try and like will like please don't shoot me up in the air. But you will be shot up in the air with the north node. And with the south node, you will, the people will magnetize to you, period. It's always social. Wow. I remember us talking about this really informally. So Clarissa actually spent an extended amount of time in Mexico City. And as uh, some people out there know, who've watched me for a while. I lived in Mexico for nine years. Two of those years were in Mexico City. And um, it was so wonderful to get together with you. But I remember when we were hanging out, you helped me in that informal conversation, see the South Node so differently, like just in that informal conversation we had, where you were talking about the South Node being like your family, being your tribe, being like mm -hmm. the situation, the environment that you're born into, not just about mm -hmm. the way that a lot of us have been taught about the South Node having to do with the past life you're bringing into this mm -hmm. life, but it's like the family you're born into, that mm -hmm. that speaks to your past life connections as well. Yeah, like literally, you know, I think it's been proven in some scientific area that we inherit all of the memories, all of the experiences, not just our, you know, physical genetic DNA, but that is also encapsulated in our DNA. And it's a trip because, you know, obviously I practice vibrational slash harmonic astrology, it's not necessarily a mainstream conversation, even within astrology, but what whatever astrology you practice, often the lunar nodes and the luminaries are involved in, in birth charts, like synastry, transit. Um, for example, like, you know, my, my mother's moon was on my south node when I was born. And et cetera, et cetera. So there are signatures of literal, you know, physical manifestation with the nodes and birds and, her, you know, her inheriting stuff, hereditary stuff, all that stuff. Wow, that's so powerful, right? And so the fact that your mom's moon is on your south node, yeah. um, that magnifies, I guess, the music between the two of you. How would you understand that? How would you interpret that? <laughs> me like screaming at like as I'm like exiting my mother's womb. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like no, that's home. No, don't take me out of my home. Her womb was your home. Yeah, yeah. A home yeah. that you were very attached to. <laughs> exactly. Because that's what the lunar nodes are. Like they're literally, I mean. A lot of stuff in VA is very astronomically exactly what the thing is. Like astronomically, the sun is the center of our solar system and it gives us life force, etc. It's the same functionality in VA um, in a lot of ways. The lunar nodes is a point in which the sun and the moon, both of our luminaries, which create conscious manifestation and being in the flesh like those two things are us in the flesh and then it distills that energy into direct physical manifestation on earth so every lunar node or every there's only two but the yeah, lunar yeah. nodes are literal physical manifestations on earth so yeah the lunar nodes are literal, physical manifestations on Earth. They distill them. It's like the point in which, you know, um, these axes create something in the flesh on Earth, create ah. what we're interacting with, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. And so the nodes help us to manifest or indicate that something is manifesting when the nodes are activated, whether natally or yes. by transit. Wow. Wow. Totally. Yeah. And like um, I said earlier, they're direct manifestations. So you can't like other planetary stuff, let's say you, you work with dignity or whatever, or in the case of VA, you have a three planet current that you're interpreting. All of those currents can be stopped by some type of outside force. Lunar nodes never can because that's their function. They're making something They're they're there's they're a force of manifestation. 
Wow. I mean, I've always thought of the nodes as being so important in prediction, right? Mm. They're so, to me, they're so important because events, people, places, things, situations, Mm. like something happens when your nodes are activated. And so two things come to mind. Like one is I love the way that you articulated that, like they are a force of manifestation, really, right? Like something's going to happen. Something's got to give some person, place, thing, situation is going to come in or change or leave or, you know, whatever the case may be. And so what happens when you hear people say, well, I had a transit to my node and nothing happened. What, how would, what would you say to that? I mean, I have my answer to that, but what's your answer to that? I mean, there's so many potentialities around that, you know, where's the person at? What's the person conscious of? Where was it placed? Like, was it like a lunar node in the 12th house, you know, conjunct Uranus, Neptune, and it's something like, you know, it's super out of this world that you can't even be conscious of or whatever. Um, I would say to that, the lunar nodes are inherently such, there's such strong points for, you know, what we just talked about like 30 seconds ago, the lunar node is the sun, moon, and earth in one point. So for nothing to manifest, it's, it's, it's hard to believe, but hey, much love. And I'm not going to discount anybody's experience. I love that. Right. Like, how conscious are you of your chart? How conscious are you moving Mm -hmm. through your life? But also, are you actually working with the symbols? Like, what's the point? Like my mom always says, you have this knowledge, you have this wisdom, and it is for a reason. So use it, you know, like, there are times when and I think all of us have this, especially astrologers, when we look at the chart, and we're like, okay, I really want to do this, but it's really not a good idea right now. (laughs) Right. I, Nadia, <laughs> I've had this moment where I've talked to myself. Oh, oh, I really want this, but oh, it's not a good idea. This is not the way to go. And yet you can't help it. Right. You just, you know, you want it, but you, you know, and so my mom's like, you have this wisdom, you have this knowledge it's to be used. And I'm like, yeah, I know mom, I know. And so I think about how <laughs> we are so fortunate, right? We can look at the chart. We can say, wow, my node, my South node or my node node is about to be activated. Let me pay attention right? Like even just doing that, let me pay attention. Let me work with this symbol. Like what house is your North node in? Do something related to that house. Like that alone can help you to cultivate some attention. And it isn't always what you think. That's the thing with karma. And we can say like, for example, I'm a big believer. One technique I like to use, which may be outside the purview of vibrational astrology, but I shared this recently on my TikTok and my Instagram reels. I know you've been giving a lot of love as I've been growing that presence on those platforms. Thank you for that, Clarissa. But I shared a technique where I said, you know, if the ruler of the fifth or the seventh is transiting conjunct your North node. Well, that's a potential there to experience love, to have new love come in. Right. So that's a very Mm -hmm. straightforward technique that we can use. However, yeah, be conscious of it. What sign is that North node in like act like that sign, pay attention to the house that that North node is in. So there's a sense of not absolving yourself of responsibility of working with these symbols consciously And also Mm -hmm. knowing that sometimes stuff happens and you don't realize it until way after the fact, some other activation happens. And then you realize, oh, wow, this started way back when a planet was on one of my nodes. Bravo, Nadia. You're so brilliant. Oh my God. Like I'm having like full body (laughs) chills over here. Like, yeah, exactly. And you know, in the the case of like personal chart analysis, like I'm so fire when I read other people's charts, like it's completely, it's, it's so different from reading my own chart where it's like, uh, I want this to happen (laughs) just like you shared. It's not happening. This is not the time, but I mean, you're, you're just so involved in your own monologue and your own, whatever's going on internally that perhaps, you know, also, you know, a quick tip would be, you know, phone in on an astrologer, you know, call your astrology friend, have a talk about it, have a discussion, get it in dialogue, you know, very lunar self node with your community to get even, you know, more added insights on what may be going on with you with that transit. Oh, I love that. And I'm a 
I absolutely believe that every astrologer needs an astrologer. Just like yeah. every astro every therapist should have a therapist, mm -hmm. every astrologer should have an astrologer because you see your own chart differently and you need sometimes people to be honest with you where, you know, like I said, my mom was like, Hey, this is the wisdom you have it, use it. But I have my own wants as well. You know, I've got some fixed energy in my chart. I've got Pluto <laughs> trying my son. When I want to get something done, I'm like, it's getting done. But then sometimes those symbols are saying to you like, Hey, be wise hold up. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's so interesting how we might um, need that somebody to help us to stay honest when we look at our own chart and look at the potentials in our chart as well. And of course, we always have our free will at the same time. Like if you really, you can say, oh yeah, I'm open to love, but if you're really not, and that's not really what you want, then it's just not going to be there for you. And it's okay. Like the, I think we judge ourselves we think that we should want certain things. Like we think we should want love, but the truth is that some of us are really happy being on our own too. And I've had times in my life when I've been really happy being on my own too. And that's cool too. But I think the acceptance of it, like sitting in it with peace is, is the thing that maybe astrology can help you with as well. Yeah, absolutely. It can help you navigate acceptance and peace, not just tolerance of your existence, but really like full embodiment and loving of whatever is going on with you. Like you said, like if you do have this lunar north node, you know, ruler um, that's ruling the five and the seven and you're not open to it, well, you're not open to it. Okay, whatever. That's fine. This is just you know, potentially a period if you were to be open to it, where you can have, you know, where you can pursue that, where you can manifest that or whatever. There's a lot of choice. There's always choice. Um, you know, free will's a real thing, you know, so. I love it. Yeah. And I think the best astrology honors our free will. But yes, like, for example, the ruler of the fifth conjunct your North Node. Well, that could be a new creative project. You know, right. that could be a time when you're especially fertile. <laughs> like there's so many ways that that energy can show up. That could be a time when you get insights into your self-actualization, right? So there's so many mm -hmm. ways that energy can come together for you. Thankfully, we have lots of potential and we can honor the full range of our human experience more than ever before. More people than ever before get to honor themselves and be themselves, authentically themselves, in more places around the world than ever before in human history. That's really exciting. It is exciting. It's so beautiful. And in a context from vibrational astrology, really, it's like if your chart is singing the loudest, meaning that you really are, you know, being kind of the loudest vessels for the energies that are coming through you, then you're really doing the work. And I think there's a lot of kind of, you know, ideas or, or self-hate or self-loathing or whatever, um, that become clear in an astrology reading that you're fine the way you are, because this is in your chart. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like wow, you're yeah. great the way you are. This is what just allow the energy to come through you and express through your vessel. If you're not supposed to be in a relationship. There may and are likely to be indications in your astrology chart and that's great. Don't do it then. There's nothing wrong with you, period. There's nothing wrong with anybody, even, you know, God bless. Like, please, don't, like, knock on wood. You know, this is not coming from a moralistic standpoint. It's just, you know, as a vibrational astrologer, the most effed up energy is you can see signatures of it and it's there. It's like, instead of like qualifying it as this is good and bad and whatever, it exists. And it's okay to exist and to be and, and be out here with it. So yeah, we love you. There we go. <laughs> there we go. We love you exactly as you are. And even the most messed up energy, you can find a way to tap into it to your advantage yep. with your consciousness, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be that your life is default. And when we say, you know, messed up, I do want to say like, you know, cause I love, um, I was deeply influenced by a Sufi mystic named Ibn Arabi, and he was also a philosopher and, uh, and an astrologer. And I uh, wrote my dissertation on him many years ago, uh, my master's dissertation. And 
he believed that the chart is perfect. Like the chart is exactly what it is that you need it to be to do all the things that you were created to do in the most highest, most loving vision for your life. That there is something perfect about your existence and the chart is a reflection of that. Even that thing you curse, even that square that you hate or that opposition that you wish wasn't there. It is part of your journey towards embodying love and wisdom. And because he was a Sufi mystic, he called love and wisdom, what I call love and wisdom, he called it God. So it's like part of your full embodiment and acknowledgement of, of your unique expression of God that you are, that opposition is necessary. That square is necessary. That messiness is necessary. And so I think that there is a perfection even in what looks messy. I completely agree. And that's, I mean, I think that that's the work of an astrologer in terms of our direct impact on the community and what we do for people. We are, um, most, many of us are honoring that in our sessions that you come in perfect. There is nothing wrong with you. Just love it. period. I love it. Uh, Clarissa, I adore you. I love the perspective that you bring. And once again, you guys remember, you can learn from Clarissa as part of the July speaker series at Synchronicity University. And if you sign up before the end of June, you can choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class to learn from five incredible world-class speakers at, like Clarissa. Well, Clarissa, I'm so glad to have you back. I love you so much. I love how your wisdom has blessed my life. I love the time that we've spent together as well. And I'm so excited to have you back at Synchronicity University. Ditto. Thank you so much. Can't wait to look at your South Node in your charts, y'all. Oh, so yes, high. you guys. One wonderful thing that Clarissa is going to be doing is she's going to reach out to students who are signed up and are going to be there live. If you're going to be there live, she's going to be asking for your charts. And if possible, she'll try to get to as many charts as possible. We can't guarantee, you know, if there are, because sometimes there are like literally 100 students live in person. So it may not be possible to get to every chart. But one thing that Clarissa is going to give you the opportunity is that if you are going to be there live and if you submit your chart, she's going to do her darndest to get to look at the charts of the participants. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun as well. Thank you for your generosity in doing that, Clarissa. Ta it's not even an act of generosity. It's an act of complete pleasure and joy. I cannot wait. Thank you. Oh my God. You're so amazing. You're such a sweetheart. I adore you. And you're so brilliant. I adore you. So thank you once again, Clarissa. And thank you everybody out there for watching. And until we connect again, take care. Bye.